calls for a loan to buy a home or to perfect the one you already have. Talk to us and see how we can help. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Nissan Altima. I think you like to fight. Justin, put the gun down. Step two, hunt her down. Between two killers and one detective, the mind games begin April 19th. Sandra Bullock, Murder by Numbers, rated R, starts tomorrow. Where does the Bay Area's most important news come from? In San Jose with new developments. Live in San Francisco. At with newsrooms in San Jose, Oakland, Walnut Creek, and San Francisco. Eyewitness News is never far from the story. Contra Costa County tonight. But as we are learning from Berkeley Police. Four newsrooms, one commitment. To report breaking news from the most important part of the Bay Area. Yours. Breaking News. Channel 5 Eyewitness News. See for yourself. Hello everybody, it is 622 in the morning and traffic's extremely light for the Sunol grade. You're looking at live pictures from the chopper of 680. The approach to the grade looks fine with no delays this morning, coasting down the hill into the Fremont area. Thanks, chopper. Now the Bay Bridge commute, we do have a small backup this morning, extending to only about the beginning of the east parking lot. A nice ride so far for this stretch of I-80 as it runs out of the Oakland area into San Francisco. San Mateo Bridge commuting, that's looking good too. In fact, we have haven't had any major accidents all morning long. That's the good news. Westbound traffic's fine approaching the toll plaza and south of this bridge, the Dumbarton Bridge commute also looking okay for Fremont riders. Golden Gate riding southbound traffic's extremely light this morning. We don't have any backups at all for the entire stretch of 101 departing Petaluma through Novato into central San Rafael. And at 623, the only problem we have for mass transit would be that 10 minute delay on ACE train number three. BART is still on time. Brian, back to you. Well, thanks, Lisa. Love him or hate him, it's really hard to ignore giant slugger Barry Bonds. He's created so much buzz, of course, at the end of last season when he hit a major league record 73 home runs, and he's really already on a roll this season, hitting his eighth just last night. Now, former San Francisco Examiner columnist Stephen Travers has written the first comprehensive biography of Barry Bonds, which is in bookstores today. Good morning, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. You know, we're locals. We know a lot about Barry in terms of what we see on TV and what we read in the papers, but what would we be surprised to know about Barry Bonds? Well, uh, Barry loves children more than he loves adults, and uh, <laughs> he probably favors uh, national media more than he favors local media. Um, but uh, overall, I... I couldn't help but like the guy. Um, my first meeting with him uh, was kind of a, a typical situation where I thought he'd stiffed me, but it turned out that uh, a problem had occurred at his daughter's school with her tuition, and he spent the whole morning dealing with regular daughter-parent uh, daughter tuition school stuff. Right. And my heart sort of went out to him. It's interesting because I know that he's, we've seen an evolution of Barry over the years. When he was playing in Pittsburgh, for example, the media absolutely despised the guy, and the fans weren't very fond of him either. We've seen him seem to soften a little bit. Is that really the case? I think so. Uh, I think he's softened to the extent that he's matured and become more of an elder statesman of baseball. Um, he has a marriage that's working out. He's happy. And um, his mistakes he made, he made many mistakes as a younger person, but he, those were mistakes that he made in the public glare. Um, many of them are the same mistakes that we all make, but uh, we didn't do it with newspapers uh, covering us. What's it like with the relationship with his father? Bobby Bonds, of course, a great baseball player in his own right. Did they have a real father-son relationship? Uh, they had a tempestuous relationship, um, I suppose, which is typical of many fathers and sons. Sure. Um, Bobby had a problem with alcohol during the years that Barry was in high school, and uh, Barry uh, wondered out loud uh, whether his father would embarrass him by showing up at games drunk. Um, hmm. Barry once showed up at Arizona State and uh, just went crazy on the coach. Jim Brock there had him up against a, a fence and was screaming. Bobby did. Bobby yeah. had, was doing this yeah. in front of the fans and the other players. 
um, over a slight that uh, he had perceived. Uh, basically, Barry had been late for a curfew, hmm. and, and uh, Coach Brock had made him run five miles. And Barry had opened his mouth and said, no, uh, there were other guys doing it. And this infuriated the coach and made him run 20 miles. And Bobby flew all the way to Tempe and just went crazy on the coach. Has the relationship healed between the two over time? Yes. Um, it's healed as much because Bobby has matured as a person as, uh, as Barry has. Right. And so I think, uh, I think there's a, a, a sense of closure and, and obviously great pride. Does Willie Mays play a role in Barry's life, a real role as a mentor, as an almost family figure? Uh, Willie Mays is the greatest influence on Barry Bond's life in, in every way, and not just in baseball. Uh, in many ways, uh, Barry's life has paralleled Willie's, Willie's personal life, Willie's uh, uh, attitude towards the media, his attitudes about race, uh, his, uh, and obviously what he's learned on the field. He's been a great influence. He's uh, the biggest influence on his life. That's great. Well, again, the name of the book is Barry Bonds, Baseball's Superman. Steve Travers, the author. Steve, thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you, guys. There is more to come in the next half hour of Eyewitness News Early Edition this morning. An American jet is responsible for the death of Canadian soldiers on the ground in Afghanistan. I'm Mark Lodato in Washington, D.C. We'll have the details straight ahead. Down here in downtown San Francisco, dozens gather to remember the 96th anniversary of the 1906 earthquake. I'm Simon Perez. I'll tell you more about it. Does the constant nagging of aches and the unbearable effects of pain keep you from doing even simple tasks or enjoying the benefits of an active lifestyle? Do you remember?